A grave threat to national security. That's what China is calling those who support independence in Hong Kong. It's all to do with two politicians and their refusal to pledge allegiance to Beijing. Will China overrule the local courts? And what does this mean for Hong Kong's political future? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Fully Batibo. It's been the dominant issue ever since the British handed over control of Hong Kong to China nearly 20 years ago. How much independence should the territory have? Now, tens of thousands of people are protesting against what they see as Chinese interference. It began with two newly elected politicians who refused to back Beijing during their swearing-in ceremony. Hong Kong's government wants to disqualify Ba Jiu Lung and Yao Wai Ching from the Legislative Council. The two set off a fierce debate after displaying a sign reading, Hong Kong is not China during the ceremony. China says their actions are a threat to national security and has vowed to intervene. But they are fears Beijing is trying to undermine Hong Kong's judicial independence, stripping the territory of its autonomy. We've got a lot to get to with our guests, but first, Divya Gopalan sets up our discussion from Hong Kong. After marching several kilometers, thousands of people have gathered here in front of the China Liaison Office. What they're concerned about is a decision on Monday by Beijing's Standing Committee on whether they should interfere or intervene in Hong Kong's constitution and redraft how legislative councillors should take their oath. Now, this has arisen after two young legislative council elect members had deliberately botched their oath and insulted China and had a poster behind them saying Hong Kong is not China. They were not allowed to retake their oath. The chief executive has now taken the matter to Hong Kong's courts and the high court is due to rule on whether they will be allowed to do that and remain elected legislative council members. Hong Kong people say by Beijing intervening in this matter, it affects the wider issue of Hong Kong's independence. This will open the floodgates for Beijing to intervene on other judicial matters and Hong Kong's judiciary independence will be at stake. Well, Beijing's reaction has brought to the fore the deep divisions between those who accept China's rule and those who challenge it. A new generation of pro-democracy activists won seats in Hong Kong's Legislative Council back in September. It was an unprecedented result for a political system traditionally dominated by pro-Beijing sentiment. Many of them were leading figures from the 2014 pro-democracy protests. The so-called umbrella movement demanded voting rights but ultimately failed to win any democratic concessions. Some of the candidates used their swearing-in ceremonies to stage anti-China protests demanding greater autonomy. But Beijing says anyone who wants to split the nation has no place in public office. Well, let's bring in our guests now for today's Inside Story. In Hong Kong, we have Emily Lau, chairperson of the Democratic Party of Hong Kong and former member of the Hong Kong Legislative Council. In Beijing, we have Victor Gao, director of the China National Association of International Studies. And in London, Roderick Wai, associate fellow in the Asia program at Chatham House. Thank you all for being on Inside Story. Welcome to the program. Emily, in Hong Kong, if I can start with you, I know that members of your party, the Democratic Party of Hong Kong, are participating in the ongoing protests in Hong Kong. What exactly is your main concern today? Well, we don't think Beijing should interfere in this case. The Hong Kong government has actually taken the whole case to court and there was a hearing and the judge is going to come out with its decision. And, uh, and this reinterpretation of the basic law which will happen tomorrow morning, uh, is actually against the wish of the Hong Kong government and all the people in the Hong Kong uh, pro-establishment. So I guess nobody in Hong Kong supports it. But the Chinese government, the central government, does not consult us and just say, OK, we will you know, take it in our own hands. And this total disrespect for the Hong Kong government and the action would undermine our legal system, our judicial system. It, it, would, it would deal a very, very heavy blow to one country, two systems. And it's totally unnecessary. We know Beijing's concern, but I guess they should 
be a bit more patient and allow Hong Kong people, the government, uh, the legislature and the judiciary to handle it our way instead of, you know, just barging in like that. Mm. It's sending a very, very disturbing and alarming signal to all of us. OK, well, let's hear from Beijing and Victor Gao. Victor Gao, various reports, as Emily is saying there, say that the Beijing government is pretty determined to stop uh, Ms. Yao and Mr. Long, the two controversial lawmakers, from joining parliament. What is your view on this saga? And will we see Beijing use its power to overrule the local courts, as many people in Hong Kong fear? First of all, what these two newly elected members of the parliament in Hong Kong uh, have been uh, completely violating the principles of the basic law. So we are talking about the violation of the basic law, which is the most important law in Hong Kong. Uh, China has the one country, two system uh, for both mainland China and in Hong Kong. Uh, on ordinary matters, mainland China, the central government, does not need to intervene in the daily operations in Hong Kong. However, when the basic principles of the basic law are violated and being threatened, the central government, in the form of the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress, has the right to intervene in whatever matters mm. in Hong Kong which may constitute the violation of the basic law. Therefore, there is tremendous amount of support for the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress to take actions, to bar any action in Hong Kong which violates the basic law. And this is the point that we are talking about. Okay. As for the local court in Hong Kong, they can make whatever decision they may want to make. But if the decision eventually will lead to the violation of the basic law, the central government has the right to overturn the local decision. Uh, Emily, your response to that, Victor has a fair point. He says that legally the Chinese government does have the right to interpret Hong Kong laws. That's true legally. What do you respond? No, they have, they have a right to interpret the basic law. To, to interpret Hong Kong laws is up to the Hong Kong courts. Well, of course, China has a right to do it. But China has also given an undertaking to Hong Kong and to the international community that under one country, two systems, there are many things which would be left to Hong Kong and to our courts. So if China just want to rush in and break its promises, of course it can do anything it likes. But that means uh, it is reneging on all the promises. And what for? What I'm saying is over this, I mean, very few people uh, agree with the actions of the two young members. Mm -hmm. And now the government has taken this case to court. And the government said they do not want Beijing to interpret the basic law. So it's not just from us, the pro-democracy movement, the opposition. Even the Hong Kong establishment say, no, no need to do it. Okay. And Beijing said, forget it. We're going to rush in and do it. So that's why I said it, it's, it's really, okay. it's mindless and it's let's, unnecessary. Let's hear from Roderick Y in London. Roderick, for our international audience who's not f maybe familiar with this case, is this just about two lawmakers refusing to pledge allegiance to China or is there a bigger issue at stake here? What, what is the main concern today? I think for, the, for Beijing, uh, the big issue behind all this is their unwillingness to trust uh, the people and the system of Hong Kong uh, to uh, behave in the way that they want it to. Uh, I think Emily is largely right that this was an unnecessary intervention, but Beijing felt that it could not leave the Hong Kong courts uh, to make a decision with which it would potentially disagree, in Victor Gao's words, would violate uh, the spirit of the, the basic law. So uh, Beijing has anticipated this, or is about to anticipate this, by the National People's Congress uh, making a decision uh, on the interpretation of Article 104, which relates to the oaths, uh, and that will bind the court of Hong Kong uh, into coming to a particular decision. Uh, so this was a direction, essentially, this is a direction by Beijing up to Hong Kong Kong about how uh, the judiciary should interpret this particular uh, matter and it is an evidence of Beijing's unwillingness uh, to let uh, the matter uh, be handled in Hong Kong because they cannot be sure of the outcome. 
Now, as our guests have uh, mentioned, China governs Hong Kong under the one country, two system principle. The complex framework was put in place when the city, a former British colony, was handed back to China in 1997. Hong Kong's constitution called the Basic Law states the territory has a right to develop its own democracy. Unlike on the mainland, Hong Kong has its own legal system and the protection of freedom of assembly and free speech. But there are restrictions. Hong Kong's leader is still chosen by a Beijing-backed committee, and China's parliament has a right to interpret the territory's law. Roderick, I want to come back to you on this uh, point of uh, one party and two system. Do you think it's under threat today? Are we slowly going to see a one country, one system? Well, for Beijing, uh, the important element in that formula is one country. Uh, if people uh, accept Beijing's premises of one country, then they are happy, then Beijing is happy for two systems to uh, coexist because they can then, under such circumstances, uh, be sure that there will be nothing coming out of the Hong Kong political system. And essentially, this is where the argument is. It's not about the uh, legal or commercial systems in Hong Kong. It's about the political system. Right. Uh, and Beijing is unwilling to allow Hong Kong to make its own decisions in this respect. Emily, what uh, do you see uh, as a way out of this crisis, this particular crisis involving these two uh, lawmakers? What is the solution as far as you're concerned? Well, as I said, the case is now in court. We should have left it to the judiciary, which is held in very high regard by the Hong Kong people because our judges are fearlessly independent mm -hmm. and they have the respect of the community. So that's, and now the case is there and people trust them, so let them deal with it. And then, but now Beijing's barging in and, uh, and, and one country, two systems. What is so distinct about the Hong Kong system it's our legal system mm -hmm. because in China, mainland China, it is almost complete lawlessness. But here, we have a very independent judiciary and independent legal system. And if they destroy that, then almost they destroy everything. Okay, let's but hear of course, I am a living example of one country, two systems because I cannot go to mainland China, but I am in Hong Kong, China. But still, I mean, one country, two systems. The most important thing is our legal system. And we don't want Beijing to destroy it. Okay, let's hear from Victor Gao in Beijing on that particular point, Victor, that an intervention by the central government yeah, in Beijing you... now, as the local court is hearing uh, the case of, of these two lawmakers, is a blow to Hong Kong's judicial independence and undermines uh, international confidence in Hong Kong's autonomy. What do you respond? No, I think as far as Hong Kong is concerned, the most important law is the basic law. And under the basic law, we all support and are bound by the one country, two system concept. Mm. But the premise for the two systems is the one country. If there are actions in Hong Kong which challenge the one country concept, then the two systems break up. Therefore, what's happening in Hong Kong is a direct threat to the one country, uh, two system uh, concept, which is the cardinal point of the basic law. Therefore, when the one country, two system is fundamentally threatened, the central government definitely has the right to interpret what exactly the provisions of the basic law mean as far as Hong Kong is concerned, but, oh. including as far as whether the central government need to take actions to prevent the continued violation of the one country, two system principle. Victor, That's what do you respond? the issue we are faced with. Let me Don't ask you surprised. this, Victor. Let Don't me ask be surprised you if the there central government will take the, actions the, the, the to defend government. the basic law. Yeah, there are those who accuse the Beijing government, the central government, of a double standard because, you know, they say Hong Kong's uh, chief executive, C.Y. Lung, the leader of Hong Kong, also missed out on the words Hong Kong when he was sworn in in 2012, that there is a double standard there. <laughs> what do you say to that? No, I think any elected officers, including members of the LegCo, need to uh, use the same pledge where before they uh, start to exercise their functions. Now for these two newly elected members, they refuse to use the standard expression in the Pledge of Allegiance and further they but distorted so, so did C. Y. Uh, the in 2012. wording of the pledge so, so and did also C. Y. they Lung expressed... In 2012. Did he not miss out Hong Kong when he pledged allegiance? 
No, I don't think so. You can check the wording of C.Y. Long's uh, pledge, and he used he used the standard pledge that every elected officers in Hong Kong need to use. That's why the situation in no, Hong Kong no, no, is no. a direct CY violation miss, of the basic CY law principle. Emily, go ahead. C.Y. Leung did miss out Hong Kong, the two words. And I think, I hope this gentleman in Beijing will not mislead the international community. It's not as if ISIS or Al-Qaeda, they are operating in Hong Kong. We're just talking ab about a group of youngsters who, <coughs> who want independence. How can that threaten China's security? Please if, don't blow it up like that. It's so unfair. Here. Victor, what would you respond to that? Yeah, I would like to remind Emily that any threat to the basic law is a threat that needs to be dealt with, and it is. It doesn't <laughs> matter how young or old the person is. Even if they are the youngsters, if they violate the basic law, they will be dealt with as it is. That's the warning that the central government needs to exercise to the people in Hong Kong. No one should tolerate the violation of the basic law, which is the cardinal law governing Hong Kong. And I think the central government will need to take action to affirm it this point at any cost to the people in Hong Kong. OK, let's bring in Roderick Wai in London. Roderick, when you hear this Even debate between it, Emily and, and Victor, what do you think? And, and where do you think this crisis is, is going to go? Are, are we going to see an increase in tensions in the coming days in Hong Kong? More protests or is, is China going to intervene and, you know, we're, we're you know, going to see a calmer situation perhaps in the next few weeks? We are seeing uh, increasingly strident language coming mm. out of uh, Beijing. This idea that the government cannot, that Beijing cannot afford to uh, stand idly by while the whole system, as they see it, is threatened. But we do need to step back a bit and, and look at what has actually happened. Right. This was a protest by two young members of the newly elected members of the Legislative Council, which in most systems would be uh, dealt with uh, very. Uh, simply uh, by the system itself and does not need a huge, in, a massive intervention uh, by the central Beijing central government in, in this way. And what we are going to see as a result of this is increasing polarization in Hong Kong. We are seeing uh, big demonstrations about Beijing, uh, Beijing's interference uh, on the streets of Hong Kong, and it's going to be very difficult for either side to find a way uh, to back down uh, from this uh, relatively minor incident right, that has now become a major constitutional challenge. Increasing polarization, you say, Roderick, but at the same time, not everyone in Hong Kong want full independence from China, do they? Indeed not. And in many ways, the argument, uh, I mean, independence is not uh, is not an option in Hong Kong. And very few people actually want independence. What they want is more autonomy and uh, the ability uh, to run their affairs in the way that they wish to uh, and w within uh, the, the People's Republic of China. Uh, China chooses to interpret uh, what it has seen happening recently as a fundamental challenge both to its basic law and to the system in China. And that is for most people, not the case. Victor Gao in Beijing, the people in Hong Kong, it's true those who've been protesting are asking for more autonomy uh, and you know more say in their day-to-day -day affairs. If the protests continue in Hong Kong, will we see the Chinese government make some concessions or not? As I mentioned, uh, uh, one country, two system uh, governs uh, the operations in Hong Kong. And uh, uh, if there is any real challenge, even by the two newly elected members, it will be dealt with. China will not tolerate any member of the LegCo who refuses to take the uh, Pledge of Allegiance uh, and uh, who uh, does not recognize China and does not recognize part but uh, Hong Kong is part of China. If that happens, uh, right. Beijing will definitely take action to prevent that from happening at any cost. No one in Hong Kong should indulge in the fantasy that Beijing will stand idle to allow any members of the parliament to disregard the one China system, to disregard the ironclad fact that Hong Kong is part of China. If that ever happens, 
Beijing but will Victor go to the hilt to take whatever measures that are necessary to defend the basic law and to make sure that everyone in Hong Kong knows that Hong Kong is part of China. But what's the point then of elections in Hong Kong, Victor Gao? You may as well get China to nominate everyone then, if that's the case, if they're going to take any measures, as you say, necessary. Now, the independence of Hong Kong is a fallacy. It will not happen. It cannot happen. But the question is that if there are elected officers in Hong Kong who refuse to recognize the one China concept, the one country's uh, concept, then the two, con the two system concept will fall apart. But again, what's That's the point the of elections we are faced then? With? What's well, the point of elections then if, you know, if people who refuse to, to, to accept that are, are, are not you know, are considered uh, to be legal? What's the point of elections? Beijing might as well nominate every lawmaker in Hong Kong. No, that's exactly the point. I think the majority of the LegCo members do not misbehave I like these two newly elected members. These two members are taking unprecedented actions. If you look at the LegCo history throughout the decades, even under the British rule, such things had never happened. How could any parliament in the world, in any political system, tolerate members who refuse to take the Pledge of Allegiance, who refuse to take the pledge to the one country, and still want to exercise their functions as a legal member? This is a fallacy. Okay. Therefore, I think China will not stand idle to witness this kind of situation evolve into chaos and anarchy in Hong Kong. Okay, let's hear from uh, Emily in Hong Kong. Emily says Beijing, uh, Victor Gao says uh, the Beijing government will not stay idle, that they will take strong measures if necessary. Do you think this is going to uh, be a concern for the people who are protesting? Are they, uh, are they likely to see this as a, as a threat? Well, of course they are. And, uh, and Victor Gao should ask himself why is it that you know, this thing has not happened, even under British rule? Why is it that two young members uh, want to behave like that? And why is it that students in uh, secondary schools and in universities, many of them now, uh, want to discuss independence? Hmm. Well, somebody must have provoked it. The thing that not happened not too many years ago. So Beijing and the Hong Kong government must ask themselves why? Why is it that the younger generation are behaving in this way? But I must repeat the point that what is happening now is uh, this reinterpretation of the basic law that will be announced on Monday morning is not something that the Hong Kong government the government that's appointed by Beijing, it's not that the Hong Kong government has asked for it. In fact, the Hong Kong okay. government has said there is no need to do it. And if they insist on doing it, the Secretary for Justice, Rimsky Yun, uh, may resign tomorrow. And that would trigger another round of big embarrassment and, and crisis. Okay. Is that what Beijing wants? Let's get the last word from Roderick in, in London. Roderick, Emily is right in saying that the, the topic of independence from China, which was once regarded as taboo, has come uh, to the fore since the pro-democracy protests in Hong Kong in 2014 and, you know, the protesters' failure to secure concessions from the Beijing government. If these demonstrations continue, do you think, will the central government budge? Do you think they're likely to make concessions or not? They're not going to make any concessions. I mean, you hear that clearly from Victor Gao and you hear that clearly from uh, all uh, official pronouncements in Beijing. Uh, and the result will be, as I said earlier, further polarization in Hong Kong and uh, the escalation of what was uh, a serious but not that serious uh, incident in Hong Kong into a major uh, constitutional problem. Uh, and that is not going to be easy to resolve because Beijing will not allow Hong Kong uh, to resolve it on its own terms. Okay, it'll be, of course, very interesting to see how this uh, crisis unfolds in the next few days. We'll keep an eye on all the developments out of Hong Kong here on Al Jazeera. Of course, thank you all for taking part in this discussion. Emily Lau, Victor Gao, and Roderick Wai. And thank you for watching. You can always watch this program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. For further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Fully Batibo, and the whole team, thanks for watching. Bye for now.